I'm Robert Fuller, wildlife artist and filmmaker, and I'm going to try and capture the secret life of frogs in my garden pond. Following their remarkable life cycle, from spawning, to hatching, Finally taking their first hops beyond the pond. One of the first things I did when I moved here was build this pond and that was 26 years ago and it's been well worth it because look at it now, it's absolutely teeming with frogs. These are common frogs, Orana temporaria. A well-known inhabitant of fresh water across the UK. These frogs share the pond with an array of life. Toads, newts, and a range of invertebrates. Frogs rely on water sources, either natural or man-made like this one. And this year I'm gonna film their extraordinary life cycle. As winter loses its grip and spring starts to emerge, the frogs make the trip back to the pond to breed. There's no frog spawn yet, but with so many caught in frogs, it's not going to be long. These frogs are getting really busy now. The breeding season is really ramping up. Trying to impress the females, the males use their vocal sac to advertise their presence. They close their nostrils and mouth and move all the air from their lungs into the vocal sac. They then move this air to and fro without expelling it. The result is a symphony of calls. At this time of year the females are in high demand and the males latch on, trying to get their best chance to mate. And there's a big ball of them in the middle of the pond right now. Males wrestle to win the right to mate the female. She often ends up in the middle of a mating ball. Here she is, surrounded by males, with more coming to join. And once they've got hold of a female, they try not to let go, kicking the competitors off. But the males are persistent, forming clusters, trying to hang on. But sometimes in the chaos, unwanted participants join in, such as this common toad, which also come to the pond to spawn at this time of year. Toads are often confused with frogs, but there are several ways to distinguish them. Frogs have smooth, slimy looking skin, whereas toad skin is covered in warty bumps and appears dry. Frogs are an athletic looking species, with longer legs suited to hopping, whereas toads are more stout, with shorter legs better designed for crawling. These battles to make can sometimes last hours and the females can even drown in the process. Look at that, she's stuck between two males. As the female sinks to the bottom, she is trapped. It's now a race against time to surface before her oxygen runs out. The males, blinded to her suffocation by a mating frenzy, weigh her down. Eventually, she persuades them to surface and gasps at the much needed air. A couple of days later, I'm kitted up, ready to see if they've been successful. The first batches of frog spawn are just on the edge here, but with this many frogs in the garden, there's going to be plenty more to come. 
So this is absolutely incredible. Over 15 frogs have spawned here now. And this is quite typical. They've chosen a really secluded area of the pond. Once a male has managed to fend off other competitors, he will remain attached to the female's back for up to 24 hours. The female will then lay hundreds to thousands of eggs, encased in a protective jelly that expands in water, filled with nutrients to help the tadpoles for the first few days. They attach their eggs to the pondweed to prevent them sinking to the bottom. And while the female is laying the eggs, the male sprays them with his sperm to fertilize them. As night falls, there's a boom of activity. I head out to study them after dark. It's amazing in just a couple of days how much frog spawn's been laid here. And they're so intent on the behavior here that they don't mind me having the lights on briefly. The frogs are attracted to anything that moves. And there's one actually on the end of the lens now, just checking it out. It's a really still night tonight and the sound of these frogs is absolutely incredible. There's some toads trying to mate in the water just in front of me here. The toads don't realize yet, but they're about to get caught up in the frogs urge to mate. This is a real battle. The toads are actually trying to mate and the frogs are getting in between them. Frogs bundle around the toads, trapping them inside an ever-growing cluster. Now submerged, the toads could be in danger, with more frogs swarming in. They must find a way out before they're swamped and potentially drowned. The toads have come right onto the bank here. And this is incredible, the frogs are following. Despite out of dangerous path, the toads are still frustrated by the determined frogs. They try and kick them off, but the frog's grip is strong. The frog tries to fight back, but catches its own eye in the crossfire. That frog's still wedged in between them. This has been going on forever an hour now. Fatigue starts to set in. These frogs have expended an enormous amount of energy on their chance to mate with the wrong species. Eventually, they realize their error. And the frogs finally leave the toad couple in peace. The next morning, I return to the pond. This is a great example. We've got frog spawn and toad spawn together. So I'm just gonna gently lift this out of the water a bit. So this is toad spawn here in long strands. And on this side, this is frog spawn in a solid mass. What a great example of seeing the both of them together. Just gently lower that back. After a few weeks of frenzied activity, only a few hopeful males are left trying to find any females that are still yet to spawn. The pond's gone quieter now. I think most of the spawn's been laid for this year and I can't wait now to see that spawn hatching. Soon the frog spawn begins to develop. Each starts as a single fertilized egg known as a zygote. A cell containing the mixture of the parents' genes, their DNA. This cell then undergoes a process called mitosis. The cell copies its DNA and then splits in two. 
with one copy of the DNA in each of the new, genetically identical daughter cells. Over the next few weeks, this will happen millions of times, in synchrony all across the pond, until a fully developed tadpole is ready to break free from the jelly. However, not all eggs are successfully fertilized, like this one bursting open. It's been three weeks since the spawn was laid. It's amazing to see how far they've come from those single cells into these little tadpoles that are now swimming around. Wow, that's amazing getting the lens under the water. I can see them breaking free from the jelly. Oh, I can see them feeding here. At this stage, they're only eating algae and plant matter. These waterbound tadpoles undergo a remarkable process called metamorphosis. As they develop, their gills previously external and feathery are now grown over by skin. As the back legs start to grow, their diet changes from eating algae and plant matter to actually being carnivorous. Eating small underwater invertebrates, such as these water fleas, and if conditions get too crowded, they'll actually eat each other. The developing tadpoles are extremely vulnerable to predators. This is absolutely incredible. I've got a lesser diving beetle right in front of the lens now. But these aren't the only predators lurking in the pond. Now this will definitely catch tadpoles. These are back swimmers. An aquatic predatory beetle that swims upside down. Here's one that's caught a toadlet. And even a spider makes a meal. Just look at the front legs on it. They're really designed for gripping. And once grabbed, it's the end for this tadpole. Injected with a toxic saliva through the back swimmer's proboscis, the saliva dissolves the tadpole's insides which are then eaten by the back swimmer. There's thousands of tadpoles here, but sadly many of them won't make it to maturity. With numbers as low as one in a thousand making it to adulthood. But the lucky ones continue to develop. Metamorphosis is very delicate. The warming waters and lower food availability that accompany climate change can shape the future of these metamorphosing tadpoles. Warmer water causes the tadpoles to metamorphose faster. As well as lower food availability and more predation. This results in smaller adult frogs, which are more vulnerable to predation from species such as tawny owls and even weasels. It's been nearly four months since the tadpoles hatched and the pond is now so overgrown. It's really hard to know where to start. And this is the bit I've been really looking forward to. The froglets have started emerging. Hidden amongst the plants, those tadpoles are now froglets. I've got one here just under the water and it's still got its tail, but that'll shrink really quickly over the next few days. And it'll come up to the surface, just like this one down here. At this stage, they're ready to leave the pond. By now, the lungs have developed and they're actually able to breathe air. The froglets will venture further from the pond with time. And they'll continue to grow for up to four years. Frogs often return to the pond where they were born. This is called natal phyllobattery. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed to see some of these froglets return to spawn in years to come. It's been an incredible project following the life cycle of a frog right here in my front garden. From building a pond 26 years ago, 
to the arrival of swathes of frogs, which chose to spawn here. I've then had the chance to watch their eggs transform into tadpoles, metamorphose into froglets, and disperse into the wilds of Fullerdale. 